Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today, we're discussing everyone's favorite topic, bid day. We're going to hear from construction pros about their biggest challenges when it comes to leveling bids and what they've done to make the process easier. My name is Jeff Gamet. I'm with Construction Dive's Studio ID team, and I'll be your moderator today. Before we get started, let's go through some quick tips to make sure your webinar experience is the best it can be. At the bottom of your screen are resizable and movable application widgets. Feel free to move them around to make the most of your desktop space. The slides will advance automatically during the presentation. If you need to enlarge them, simply click the Enlarge Slides button in the top right corner of the presentation window. If you need technical assistance, click the Help widget in the bottom left corner at any time. And as the presentation gets underway, you may submit questions using the Q&A widget. We will answer as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. And if a more informative answer is needed, or if we run out of time before we answer your question, we will follow up via email. And after today's presentation, you will receive a link with on-demand access to the webinar, so you can watch it again at any time, as well as share the content with your colleagues. Okay, now I'd like to welcome our three experts. First, let me introduce Lauren Senska. Lauren, thank you for being with us today. Please tell the audience a little bit about you. Thanks for having me, Jeff. So I started my career in construction uh, with an internship after I graduated from college in the pre-construction department. And then a few months later, I was given a position as a project engineer. Spent a few years doing that and then moved to a boutique uh, construction firm where I was lucky enough to have an amazing supervisor who really took the time to teach me and made me love love pre-con. Um, and after that firm shut down, I ended up following her to a national GC where I spent three years, which was an amazing experience. Um, and then I spent the last year before coming to Beck Tech working for a woman-owned interiors company. So different different perspective on construction from all, all of those companies. Um, but I really, really got interested in the con in the technology side because there's so much burnout with estimating. And I always felt like technology would be able to solve a lot of those problems and reduce the, the stress of estimators. Because um, everyone likes to focus on operations. And that's one of the things I love about my job now is I can really focus on trying to improve and make estimators' lives better. Oh, wonderful, and thank you, Lauren. Uh, also joining us today is Robbie Gronbach from Willis A. Smith Construction. Robbie, welcome and tell us a little bit about your background, please. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, yeah, so I think growing up, I always knew I'd, I'd be in construction. It kind of runs uh, in the bloodline. Uh, went to the University of Florida for construction management, uh, graduated with a master's degree in construction management immediately. Uh, went into the operations side. So I went into, started as a project engineer, um, advanced into project management. So the first six, seven years of my career, I was, I was in the field uh, learning how to build and, and learning the trials and tribulations of, of construction. And, and then I was introduced to the pre-construction uh, when I moved from Gainesville down to Sarasota and started with Willis Smith. So working on my 13th year at Willis Smith, um, started in pre-construction, which was quite an adjustment from being in the field, uh, going into pre-construction. Uh, my predecessor retired after a few years and I stepped into the role of, of director. And uh, it was at that moment uh, that we realized, you know, we still had this plan room. We still had rolls of drawings. We, we had a digitizer in the corner and, and the guys that were with me uh, we immediately started packing that stuff up and putting it in boxes and putting it in storage and started scouting uh, and doing webinars just like this and learning about what was what was up and coming, what was the latest technology platform that would help us be better at what we were already good at doing uh, to help us be more efficient, reduce risk and, and put a better product for our clients. And uh, we have endeavored to do that and and you know, Beck technology has been a big part of that since that first mobilization. Uh, and then even recently when we implemented uh, DEC, uh, Beck technology's destiny estimator. Excellent, Robbie, and thanks. Okay, finally, let's meet Steve Meeks. Steve, welcome, and please tell us a little bit about you. Oh, good afternoon. I'm glad to be here. 
Um, I'm a vice president of free construction and estimating at SM Wilson and Company. Uh, we're a full service construction management firm that does design, build, and general contracting, headquartered in St. Louis. Um, I've been in the business over 35 years now and originally started out with my father's residential company as a carpenter. That's what got me really interested in the business. Went on and got my engineering degree and have spent a large part of my career actually in operations. Uh, I came into estimating uh, as a design builder originally and have gotten an extensive experience in estimating uh, over the years. Uh, it's very hard to separate operations and estimating in my, in my view. And we try to do a lot of cross training here for the guys that way. Uh, but anyway, it's our job to oversee our project teams. We do budget tracking, cost analysis. We forecast and do negotiations and change orders. So we try to successfully negotiate and bid projects, which is in my, 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 realm, my realm of responsibility. Excellent, Steve. And thanks. And again, a, a big welcome to all three of you. This is going to be a really valuable discussion. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be talking about bid leveling and bid day practices. Our experts will share their bid leveling experiences over the years, and we'll also talk about some of the most common frustrations and headaches that arise when it comes to bid leveling and preparing for bid day. We'll also hear about some of the steps they've taken to reduce chaos and frustration when it comes to bid leveling. And lastly, we'll talk about bid leveling software and what it can do for bid day. As we get closer to the end of the hour, we also hope to leave some time for you to ask questions. All right, to set the stage for today, let's hear from Steve and Robbie about their bid day experiences. When Lauren introduced herself, we heard her mention that estimating and the bid day process could be overwhelming, which is something I, I think a lot of people can relate to. Later on, we'll talk about some of the improvements that Steve and Robbie have made to remove some of the chaos of bid day. Uh, but historically, what has that process been like for both of you? I could start. Uh, I'll take that one. So our bid days mostly deal with negotiated projects. Um, here at Will Smith, or construction management, 99% of our projects are negotiated. They're based on uh, continuing relationships with clients. So we are involved in the very beginning stages. And, and so when we are bidding, we are, we're getting competitive market feedback on projects that we have been participating in that design process. So we still collect those competitive bids and we compare and level them. And historically that process has been done in Excel. Uh, it's a very static process. Uh, it can be cumbersome. Um, there's certainly risk uh, involved with that. When I first started, there was a, a lot of paper uh, involved with that. You know, we've evolved to uh, putting those uh, Excel files on SharePoint and making them available to all team members. That was the first step in, in implementing um, a reduction in risk of, of having to format different files and in and interlace different tabs and making sure the formulas were still working and, and that everything was still formatted correctly. So it was, uh, it was stressful to say the least. Um, and so we're, we're, you know, it's, it's, so with historical cost, uh, we always need to look back and look how we performed on certain projects or how subs responded. And, and I would dig through all of those paper files. Uh, I would have to offer our, all the personnel basically i was the historical cost database uh so i knew what projects they needed to use as reference so so having a platform that would have all of those projects centralized was also key as we were looking for for software to implement in this process um, and so i think it's it's important that we have that centralized database so that you know should the someone not be available uh, for support, somebody can find that that information and, and, and continue working on that project. Yeah, I, I think that's something that a lot of our attendees can probably relate to. And now the longer you've been in construction and the longer you've been with the same company, the more that knowledge builds. 
and it can be difficult to extract and document that information so it's of value to other people. Now, Steve, what have your experiences been like over the years? Well, I uh, still remember the times when all of the bid leveling was done by hand. Uh, we literally did all our calculations on a calculator uh, quite a while ago. Uh, possibly some companies are even still doing that today. Uh, we moved into the spreadsheet phase quite a few years ago and basically do all of our bid leveling in Excel through the years. Um, we've gotten to the point to where we need to be able to collaborate with multiple people working on these bids. And we're to the point now to where we have people that are working on bids that aren't even in the same building. And uh, so we've transitioned to Google Sheets for that function. Uh, our estimators now work in different locations, so we needed to make sure that more than one person could be in a file at the same time, and Google Sheets has allowed us to do that. Um, in addition to our estimators, our bid day process also includes our operational team members, so they need access as well. Uh, we're not only looking at plans and constructability, but also operational details. So the local office deals directly with our subcontractors, and they're obviously involved in bid day as well. Great, thanks. And uh, Lauren, is there anything you would like to add? So I can relate to what Robbie and Steve have experienced when it comes to bid day. I also want to point out, ironically, just two years ago, I would still get hard copies either via mail or via, via fax from trade contractors of their bids which if it was sent via mail, it was normally two weeks after the bid went in, um, which is, is crazy. And where I live in Atlanta, you still have to go and hand deliver your bids for certain county and city bids. And you have to go and plan out your route before because the biggest hazard is the traffic and you make your cuts on the envelope, which, which is crazy with the level of technology we have. And the whole point of, of what they're aiming for is risk management, but it seems like we're, we're adding a lot more risk to the process by not adapting and, and adopting new technologies. Yeah, uh, excellent point, Lauren. All right, now that you've each shared a little insight into what bid day has historically been like for you, let's talk about why those methods don't support efficiency or productivity. And Lauren, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. What is it about the process that you found most frustrating? So bid day will never be perfect, even with, with all the technology, but there's definitely a ton of room for improvement, um, especially in bid leveling uh, and bid day as a whole, because it's not the most efficient process. Every company has their own unique ways of handling bid company, bid leveling, and most companies try and do everything to scope out projects ahead of time. My old boss, when I was at a large GC, always stressed, you you prepare like crazy before the day of a hard bed. Uh, you are dead in the water unless you have everything scoped out and everything ready to go. Because um, the big problem is with hard bids, you never know what your coverage is until the day of, because a lot of subcontractors hold their number until 20 minutes before the bids do. And they think they're doing it to avert their risk, but at the same time, GCs are trying to minimize their risk because there's scope gap is, is a, the biggest concern, especially with hard beds. You're trying to get in right at that number and your margins are, are so small. Um, and it was so frustrating at the time. There was no, no real automated way to view all the bids at the same time because you have to have a whole team working together on bid days uh, for hard bids. Um, and with, with certain systems that GCs were using, it, you're, you're relying on technology that isn't very reliable, which adds, adds infinitely to the stress that people experience on those days. Well, we can relate to what Lauren is, is saying. Uh, it can be very inefficient and the bid process can be very convoluted. Uh, in terms of managing bid day on my end, historically, uh, there have been times when we really couldn't even keep up with the estimators as they were doing their work. You know, when I'm managing the process, I like to have an idea where we really are so we can assess the risk. And I mean, sometimes the bids are flying in so fast and it's hard to keep up. In today's environment, you can have trouble even getting through all the bids that are coming in. 
So if a, te if a team member on the bidding process is falling behind in his evaluations and needs help, it's kind of hard to just jump in and offer support uh, amid all the chaos, especially with all the faxes and spreadsheets and all the paper that's, that's flying around. Now, Steve, when you lack that insight, it can put your team even more behind on bid day. You spend too much time trying to figure out what's going on, right? Um, and, well, Robbie, what about you? What about your process wasn't or isn't working? Sure. You know, the negotiated process is slightly different, but we still have to navigate all of the bids that are coming in, the information, bid leveling. Uh, we rely on Excel and Bluebeam. You know, working with Excel can create problems, uh, but a lot of us do it. I mean, Excel is still kind of the staple template for estimating. Uh, it has its flaws, it has its limitations. Uh, it wasn't built with the needs of the con construction industry in mind. It's simple enough to use at a basic level, but we complicate it. Uh, we create formulas and functions and, and links to different files uh, that we need to manage. You know, first you have to spend a lot of time navigating those different worksheets and tabs and within those worksheets, then you have to make sure the formulas and links are functional and correct. So everyone dreads the day that uh, we have to combine those tabs and comb through the entire f uh, file to prove formulas and make sure everything is linked and formatted correctly. It's laborious, it's full of risk. There's huge potential for mistakes. The formulas are flawed costs are miscalculated or there's a typo in the spreadsheet and this can wreak havoc. Um, studies have shown approximately 94% of spreadsheets have errors. Uh, even just one small data entry could easily cost you millions of dollars or more, whether it's an incorrect quote for materials or an underestimation of labor or a fat finger. Yeah, I've heard that 94% statistic as well, Robbie. It sounds like the probability of someone working with a spreadsheet that contains at least one mistake is pretty high. Uh, another problem is that Excel prevents you from collaborating on a file. More than one person can't work in the same worksheet at the same time. This means you can't work as one team, which limits your ability to share information. For us, that meant people were creating multiple versions of the same file. So they don't have to wait for someone else to close out of it. When that happens and there are multiple versions of the same spreadsheet floating around and no one is working from the same source of truth, users can only see their version and they have one no reference to the changes being made in other versions unless someone comes across the hall, comes in their office and says, hey, I just made this change. Uh, no one can tell when an update is made or where that change was made. Yeah, uh, that's another important point. Excel has limited multi-user features. Uh, some will say that custom programming can address some of those issues, but that can be expensive and difficult to maintain. And Lauren, I'd love your insight on that. So when we talk about user features, something um, I like to think of and consider is the fact it's difficult to maintain consistency in Excel. It doesn't automatically support a standardized approach for multiple users. And if there's inconsistency in terms of format or content, then that can create problems on the back end for accounting and project management teams or for when you try and import that information for use again later. Um, and it's challenging enough to get the right data from Excel spreadsheets into other systems. And with estimators, you're dealing with thousands of, of numbers. Um, and even with the best intentions, you're gonna make a mistake manually rekeying information up. And like Ravi said, that that mistake can easily be um, over a million dollars. Um, so our big thing is Excel trying to move the industry a little bit further away from Excel is they they give too much opportunity for error and lack the appropriate level of security. Um, be it whether they're saved on a individual's hard drive or on a company's shared drive. You never know when those things are going to go down. I have I have had it go down on my personal computer for work, and I've also had servers go down. Um, and depending on the backup and business uh, continuity process of each GC, it's difficult to secure that data in the incidents of an outage um, or, or any any act of God that could happen. And as much as we like to think those things don't happen, at least in Atlanta, the internet does go out on occasion. Um, 
And when that happens, you're you're dead in the water. And a lot of these hard beds have have no tolerance for for things that naturally arise. Yeah, uh, those are great examples of why current bid day practices have some real room for improvement. All right, before we start talking about how to address these challenges, I want to see if anyone has noticed any recent industry trends that may impact future bid days. Any thoughts on that? So earlier, Robbie had mentioned his company mainly deals with negotiated projects. Um, and I worked when I worked for a national GC that was really big on ethics and doing the right things for customers, we really tried to push negotiated projects. Um, and that's one change I'm seeing more across the industry and I'm hoping will we'll continue to develop. Because uh, we believed, when possible, the design, build, or integrated project delivery was much more efficient than doing hard bids. Um, and in a previous life, when I was involved in a few projects where a client, um, it was the school system in Atlanta, uh, they struggled to even get more than one hard bid because the GCs knew it was such a miserable pro process to go through. Um, but I hope we're, we're starting to move um, more so away from the hard bid and which could change bid day a good amount. It's nice that we're, we're getting both viewpoints represented today, but, you know, with Robbie working on negotiated projects and Steve working primarily on hard bids. But it's interesting that you're seeing a potential industry shift, Lauren. I'm also noticing that technology is starting to become a, a major uh, focus for, for GCs and the industry at large, especially when it comes to, to managing risk and one of those biggest risks being bid day. You know, I uh, I think technology here is an important talking point. Um, Wilson's, as an office, we believe that in order to stay competitive, uh, we need to embrace technology as it becomes available. Uh, we're constantly looking for what's coming next. I try not to be too far ahead of the curve. Instead, I try to stay with the curve. That's very important. Uh, we have started attending technology seminars like this one to intentionally look for ways to apply today's technology. Uh, it's not just about having the technology, but being able to figure out how to apply that technology. Exactly, and we're starting to see more companies prioritize uh, technology and prioritize people to develop that technology, uh, like Steve described. Before we move on, I also think something subtle that Robbie mentioned earlier is worth mentioning again. Uh, it's the inherent risk involved with using Excel. Another trend I'm noticing is more construction companies are starting to prioritize risk identification and management. Uh, risk is one of the most overlooked aspects on bid day, um, but people are starting to pay more attention to it, especially with what's going on in the market right now. Great. Um, okay, now we've established some of the challenges with bid day and bid leveling as they exist today. Uh, for example, the inability to collaborate and the frustration with spreadsheets. So let's talk about what can be done to change some of these longstanding practices and processes. I know all three of you have some ideas in terms of how to transform bid day and the bid level process. So Robbie, why don't you start us off? Sure. Uh, you know, for most of us, uh, bid day, bid leveling improvements have come down to using technology. We know it's a problem that everyone currently has to come to me when they have a question. Uh, my guys and, and girls have to hope I can remember what happened with a project that was completed a decade ago. Uh, we're not there yet, but we've started looking at solutions like Vec Technologies Destiny Bid Day, which is brand new so we can store and access historical bid information. Um, that will be huge for me uh, and, and the entire department. Uh, I try to keep everyone else focused on the task at hand. Uh, I'm the one who ends up looking back through old information or coming through my memory bank to find the data we need and then sharing it. Uh, having all that information stored in one platform will make it incredibly easy to go back through that, collect certain pieces of information that will improve, ultimately improve our, our whole approach. Uh, other people will be able to use and access that too. They won't have to come to me. And we'll be able to make project decisions based on bid data uh, instead of guessing. 
that sounds like a huge advantage, Robbie. Being able to get all that information out of your head and into a platform where it's secure and accessible. Exactly. And the other big thing for us was finding a platform that lets all members of the team be in the same file at the same time. For the first time ever, we can actually work together as one team, uh, which is a huge stress reliever for everybody. Well, that's a change we were able to make as well. And the impact has been huge, for sure. Now, if somebody at this point on my team needs help, I can see exactly where they are. I can put as many people as I want into a single bid package. We can stay on top of a difficult bid package by letting more than one person in the same bid package at the same time. So if we're covering five or six packages with the same person and they start to have trouble and fall behind, I can easily move the load around on the fly and I can keep up with where they are. So they get the support they need right away without us having to stop the process or spend 15 minutes trying to explain th uh, where things are at. So I can now see where the bids are as they come in and I can see the evaluations in the process. So we can easily ask questions that don't add up to us and have someone check the answer. So we quickly and simply determine where the numbers come from. Having this ability that we did not have even two years ago has changed a lot for us. That's definitely an important point. We've noticed that a lot of owners like to have their bids due at the exact same time with very little leeway. And when you're under that type of pressure, anything can go wrong. Um, as we've said earlier, um, if an Excel workbook breaks, which definitely does happen, it turns into a, a screaming nightmare. Um, and who do you call when something goes wrong and, and you can't figure out how to fix it? Uh, and you're working so frantically and being able to have uh, multiple people in the workbook at the same time is credible. And at this point, it's definitely not a one person job. You need to be able to have a team, not just of estimators, but your ops team um, helping out and leveling bids on bid day. That may be the biggest problem solver we discussed today. The, the ability to make sure your team can actually work together as a team. So absolutely. Uh, we've talked about the benefits of multiple people being able to access the same information at the same time. But Excel has other limitations. Uh, I mean, we, we experience it all the time. It can slow up bid day, it can slow up bid leveling. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll go back to the formulas and the links I mentioned earlier. Uh, those, are, those are altered and removed too easily. Uh, having a bid leveling software platform with formulas built in means that we don't have to worry about verifying them all the time. I mean, spell check. Uh, spell check feature in Excel is cumbersome, difficult to use doesn't happen automatically, I'd love it if it did. The platform we use has not only an automatic spell check function, so we know right away when we've made a mistake, but it also has an autofill, which saves us a lot of time. If I'm not worried about whether my formula is linking or the data in the cell is correct, then I'm free to pay attention to other details, um, whether it's big picture or, or even work on other projects. Whether you take time to measure those time savings or not, it's obviously a more productive work. I think Robbie is right. It definitely saves time and that's a noticeable improvement whether you actually track that progress or not. Um, and software does let you put several checks and balances in place that can act as mitigating factors to reduce problems and reduce the stress that most estimators feel on, on a daily, daily basis improving their quality of life. Um, this cuts down on mistakes and the possibilities of human error. Uh, I used to always joke around with my fellow estimators that you're you're not a real estimator until you miss at least a, a million dollars on a bid. Um, but obviously, if you can put practice in, in place to prevent that, then it's even better. Uh, for example, you could set permissions accordingly and sign roles based on tasks, reaching out to subs, prepping materials, viewing incoming numbers, addressing technical questions, and dissecting subcontractor proposals. And you have an audit trail that tells you who made the latest decision or data entry and when, which to me is a big game changer. And that way the bid lead can have final determination instead of things happening beyond our control. And when you've got so many people working in Excel spreadsheet, in my experience, something always happens um, that the bid lead is unaware of and it's just, just a risk in the game. 
Those are great ideas, Lauren. Steve, is there anything you want to add to this growing list of ways our listeners can improve bid day? This is a big one, um, and we haven't really talked about it yet. We do these uh, database estimates on uh, on estimates that are being developed during design. We go SD, DD, CD. And in generating those estimates, at some point, we take those packages out to the market to get bid information from the subcontractors. Generally, there's a big disconnect between all that estimating we did in the database and what we're doing in the bid market. And uh, the bid packages are being done in spreadsheets, basically. So it's an important feature that we can close that gap. And so using both Destiny Estimator and now Destiny Bid Day allows us a platform that'll connect those two together. Uh, we do a lot of construction management. We do a lot of hard bid, that's true. We do construction management as well. So this feature, you know, I anticipated helping us evaluate public bid packages and, con and uh, connecting my estimates together. It gives us the feedback for our historical cost as well. So we're very, very happy about what uh, has come out on the market with the bid day program. This has been such a great discussion, everyone. Thank you so much. I, I think a lot of the success you've had with making changes and updates to improve processes goes back to the technology and tools you use to overcome hurdles that have been part of the process for so long. So let's give today's attendees some tips and advice on successfully rolling out bid leveling software, especially since it might be a new idea for many of them. And Lauren, why don't you go first? So change is scary for everyone. and estimators by nature are, are fairly risk a uh, fairly risk averse group of people so it's completely understandable even though your bid leveling process may be very cumbersome and full of risk you probably have some employees who are comfortable with the way it works now because that's what they've been doing for so long um, when i was still at a gc i was part of the rollout um, of bex destiny estimator software and I saw firsthand how, how stressful it could be, especially to um, some of the more seasoned estimators um, because change, change is scary. And to some extent, I think it will always be stressful um, because using, using the technology or software can seem overwhelming, uh, even more overwhelming than the cumbersome process they're already used to. And especially in construction, um, you don't want anything to go wrong. The stakes are so high, your percentages and margins are so small um, that you're, you're hesitant. But entering into a new software rollout with an open mind can help a lot. Um, focus on the benefits where your entire team will be in a few months down the road once things are fully implemented. Uh, give people time to adjust. Um, it won't happen overnight. And you can't expect people to suddenly change their minds. And I think one of the biggest things is um, I would always tell my old boss, try not to overcomplicate it. And that's what I tell people on my implementations. It's try not to overcomplicate it. We'll get through it together. Just don't, don't stress out about it too much. It's not a bid. Uh, Lauren, that's a, a great uh, point to emphasize. People do need time to adjust to new ways of working, whatever those ways might involve. So what other words of advice do you have to help the deployment process go smoothly? So I know buying software is typically a top-down decision, and I definitely recommend getting, but I definitely recommend getting buy-in uh, from your younger groups of users, because they're going to be the ones who are using it every day, and they're going to be the ones who quickly latch on and figure out how it can work. And then you have this awesome process that can occur of reverse mentoring. Uh, where they'll teach the, the senior estimators how to use the software, and then the senior estimators will then impart, impart their, all their wisdom about estimating on the, on the younger estimator. So it's a, it's a cool process um, if people take an open mind. And once they start working with a new software and see what it can do for them and the company, they'll naturally start encouraging others to use it, um, especially if they notice the time saving and see how less stressed they are uh, when they're trying to get their jobs done. Once they're on board and brought into the idea, um, it can help to have other employees, it can help uh, other employees who are more resistant or afraid of making that lead. 
And even if you're not ready to invest in the software and you're only experiencing demos or explorations, bring some of your top younger performers in early um, in on the process and get their feedback. It'll help with the information silos um, and build buy-in early on. Uh, that's another great point. Getting some of those internal champions on board can really help the process go so much smoother. Uh, that way it doesn't seem so foreign to those who aren't comfortable with it yet. And uh, they've got internal resources that they can turn to for advice. And do you have any other tips? I mean, along with that, I would say that identifying how you're going to communicate during bid day as you roll out these new tools and processes will help ensure success too. There's no right or wrong answer. It could be via Teams, Slack, emails, text, sticky notes, um, getting everyone together on video conference or in a big conference room. Uh, but be clear ahead of time. Always pick that plan ahead of time uh, where bid day related conversations and requests will go. Um, and how you'll screen incoming bids from subcontractors and who will relay them and how, um, as they move through the process of analysis and negotiating, who, who handles all that. Also important facts to consider. Uh, Lauren, thanks for sharing those. Okay, now we are getting close to the Q&A portion of our discussion today, so I wanted to give each of you a chance to share anything else that might be on your mind about the topic. And uh, Lauren, let's go ahead and start with you. What are your closing thoughts? If you're trying to decide whether bed leveling software is for you, I would say this. I was always taught to measure contingency when you're bidding. You always look for risk and add contingency. One of the things I like about bid leveling software is how easy it makes to clearly display risk to everyone, including the people who are you sending the final number to. Uh, if you connect Destiny Bid Day to Destiny Estimator, for example, you can easily see what your historical costs are for any division based off your square feet. And you can find anything that falls beyond that standard deviation and pinpoint a potential issue with your number, as Robbie was saying earlier, unless you know for sure what's causing that deviation. And you could put that information into your notes and it closes the gap of what can potentially go wrong. And that's one example uh, we mean when we talk about reducing risk. A great example, Lauren, and thank you. Uh, Robbie, do you have any final closing thoughts to share? I do. I, you know, Lauren uh, touched on this, but I'll take a deeper dive. Um, and it's one thing that we, we, we should talk about. And it's... Uh, the reduction of risk, the challenges and the frustrations of bid day and bid leveling. If you can successfully do that, reduce those frustrations and make work a little easier for everyone, then you could potentially ultimately impact employee satisfaction and retention. I mean, it's incredibly important, it's particularly in today's landscape. Uh, employees can see, if they can see you're investing in the resources to help them do their jobs more effectively, more efficiently, uh, safely, uh, they'll be less likely to be get discouraged, uh, look for work elsewhere. A happy employee who doesn't feel like they have to struggle through the day is one who's much more likely to stick around. Oh, that's so important, Robbie. And uh, like you said, definitely an important factor to consider with the latest shortage that the construction industry is facing right now. Uh, Steve, do you have any closing thoughts? Well, interestingly enough, I know we keep talking about Excel, uh, but there's a good reason. I mean, a lot of people still use Excel. But I want to point out there is one difference between Excel and database software. If you're investing in a cloud software solution, there is one other benefit to be aware of. As improvements are being made to that software, you're continuously receiving those updates. So the tool just keeps getting better and better. We work with uh, the Destiny folks a lot about things we'd like to see on our system. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that has been updated recently had to do with their takeoff system. So uh, we get updates all the time to make the system better. Uh, you'll always have the updated software and you always have someone to call if you have questions or need help. Steve, that's a wonderful note to end on, so thank you. And we are nearing the end of our presentation today. So I, I do want to thank all of you for joining us. And we do have a few minutes left to address some of the questions that came in. 
And remember, if we don't get to your question today, we will follow up with you via email to get you the information you need. Lauren, this first question is for you. You mentioned that some of these companies are trying to encourage negotiated projects as compared to hard bids. Can you give a little more detail on how that might change bid day? Sure. So with hard bids, it's low cost win. The GC is bidding the drawings, the subs are bidding the drawings. They're not bidding what actually needs to be built. And so then you get end up with a bunch of change orders. So you're not working together collaboratively with FP. With negotiated projects, you're not only a team with your subcontractors because you bring them on earlier, you're a team with the owner and the architect. So you can mitigate so many problems ahead of time. And your focus isn't low cost margin win. Your focus is building a building that's going to stand the test of time and, and make a significant impact on your community. Great, thanks. Uh, Robbie, this next question I think is a good fit for you. Um, can you tell me more a little bit about what you've heard from employees related to employee satisfaction and what tools are making their jobs easier? And a follow up to that is do they recognize any value in that? I think so. Um, I mean, they're still here. Maybe that's the easy button. I, you know, we're in this corner of the building. We are, um, we're, we're pre-construction nerds. I um, mean, we, we definitely have overcomplicated spreadsheets and, and, and having, uh, Beck Tech's destiny and, and bid day in our department. Um, I see more smiles. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds corny, but, um, we pop into each other's offices and say, Hey, I just found this, this, you know, whether it's a, little widget or a shortcut or a new window or just an easier way to do something. Um, there's definitely an elevated sense of, Hey, this is fun. This is working. Uh, this is, this is making our life easier. It's easier to use. Uh, and, and I do, I do think they recognize the value. Great. Thanks. All right, Steve, I have a question for you and this one is actually directed at you. Um, how did you help create the uh, the culture that's embracing technology in your company? And uh, can you explain how you're keeping that going? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, yes, I am involved in the culture change for sure. Um, more as a catalyst for improvement. I call it improvement. Some people call it change. I see it as a positive. Some people resist changes, but overall, I think that uh, as people get into the things that are that are out there that help them in their job, they adopt it very quickly. Uh, the key in my mind was to develop people and let people have uh, basically road to run, so to speak, in terms of uh, doing things that are out of the box. So we've got internal champions that have grabbed onto parts of this and have uh, really made it their project. So all these different parts and pieces, we've let people have, uh, have the lead on it. It's a, big, it's a big difference. I call those the tiger teams in our company. They are cross-departmental tiger teams that have taken hold and made all this happen. Great, thanks. And we are out of time, so that brings us to the uh, close of today's webinar. A big thank you to all three of you, uh, Lauren, Robbie, and Steve, for being our panelists today. And uh, we also want to thank you, our audience members, for being here and listening in on the conversation. Today's webinar will be available on demand, and you will soon receive an email with a link so you can rewatch or share with your colleagues. And as a reminder, if we didn't have time to get to your question, you will get an email follow-up later. And everyone, have a great day.